Okay, our next problem is really great for Desmos as well, because if you have one constant, like in this case, they said A is a non-zero constant, you can throw it in Desmos and then move the slider around to get what you want. In this case, you'll notice all of our answer choices have A in them. So they basically want to know which of the following is equal to K. As you can see, K is going to be the Y value of the vertex. So if you basically have all the answer choices still saying A and they're just expressions, that means you can make A whatever you want because when A changes, your vertex will change as well. But then whatever you make A, you're gonna put it in all the answer choices until it matches the vertex when A is that value. Let me just show you. I hope that's not too confusing. So as you can see, I just typed it in. I'm gonna add my slider. I wanna zoom in. I really like keeping A as one because then it's just easy to work with when I plug one into all the answer choices. And I'm looking for the vertex and it looks like the, ver oh, hang on, I gotta change this to a plus, okay. It looks like the vertex is at negative 2.25 because I made A1, so that would be negative one. That is not where the Y coordinate of the vertex is at. The Y coordinate of the vertex is at negative 2.25. And you know, if you're not good at mental math, you can always on the next line test negative nine fourths. And as you can see, you get negative 2.25 because you're just gonna multiply that by A, which is one. So that's what we want. That's why the answer is going to be B. So if you have one constant in the problem, Desmos is great. It's when you have multiple constants. Like if they give you an A, B, and C, that's not a good time to use Desmos because there's too many moving parts and you'll have too many sliders.